This regular meeting of council for Monday, November 7th is called to order. First and foremost, uh, may I have a motion to adopt the November 7th regular meeting agenda as presented. Councilor Ross, Councilor Thompson, <coughs> all in favor? So carried. In the minutes, may I have a motion to adopt the October 24, 2016 special to go in camera meeting minutes as presented. Councilor Ross, Councilor Hammond, all in favor? So carried. May I also have a motion to adopt the October 24th, 2016 <coughs> regular meeting minutes as presented. Councillor Thompson, Councillor Tripp. Discussion, Mr. Mayor? Councillor Tripp. Uh, just let me get there on page 10. I think there's a, so let me have a look here. Found something in there. Um, oh, yes, it was the, um, it's item number C, the bylaw officer memorandum update on unsightly properties. Uh, line number three there says he does not know if any of the property owners, owners are here tonight. And I do believe that Mr. Alcock knew that um, there was a property owner here. So maybe if we just took out does not and just say he knows. Oh, well, no, but I asked, he didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't know her? No. He did. no, apparently not. She didn't make herself known until after the fact? Oh, I I thought that he was very aware of who she was. No? I think so. Okay, I, thank you. I remember that question being asked. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so all in favor? Anyone opposed? So carried. Moving on to the written reports of council. May I have a motion to receive all the written reports from council? Councilor Krog, Councilor Hammett. All in favor? So carried. In regards to the next item is the verbal report from the RDKB rep, which would be myself. Unfortunately, I left my notes in my other briefcase. So I will go through it very briefly. I have a few things from memory. On October 27th, there was a board meeting in Grand Forks. There was delegations from the Big White Mountain Community Development Association and just to state how the community has grown up there, type of lifestyles. And they needed a letter of support from the RDKB for the, their postal code, which they didn't have one. Mount Baldy also presented themselves, similar circumstances. Wild Safe BC was there with Lori Grant and Frank Ritney. They discussed the different species and the confrontations that have occurred. Um, there were other items, but unfortunately, like I said, I don't have my, all my notes with me. Then on November the 1st, there was a BEDC meeting and discussion where Grand Forks was seeking a letter of support for the BCAAP grant to replace the solar panels and batteries at the airport. The projected cost was 220, 220,000. The city's portion would have been one quarter and the grant's portion would have been three quarters. Again, there was more items, but unfortunately my apologies, I don't have all my notes with me. So a couple of other items were October 28th was the Legion's. This has nothing to do with the RDKB, but the coffee presentation. Mr. Mayor, can't My apologies. Yeah, on October 28th, I attended the Legion's first poppy presentation. 29th, we had IMC at the holiday, Halloween, I should say, Fright Fest, costume and judging. And then on November the 1st, we're at a strategic plan review, November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, Asset Management BC Conference and Performance Measures. and. Our own CAO was one of the speakers there. And that would do it for myself for this evening. So may I have a motion to receive that report? Councillor Ross, Councillor Tripp. Oh, go ahead. Um, I just want to ask you a question about um, Lori Grant and Grant Ritchie um, from WildSafe when they talked about the conflicts with wildlife in the community. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? To a degree, there wasn't really much discussion on that matter. There was questions like other species, and those were not unidentifiable species. It was just a basic presentation. But um, I think our acting should be able to. Were you not at the? No, you weren't at that one. No. At the EDC. No, unfortunately, I can't because I don't have my notes with me. There wasn't much discussion in regards to that. There weren't any 
major confrontations, if that's what you mean. It was just a connection between the public and deer and so on, but nothing of any s s consequence. But I will be getting the report, and once I do, I'll submit them to the presentation. We're, I'm still waiting on the actual presentation from the delegation. The minutes? Yeah. Oh. Uh, with their presentation, was she, did she do a PowerPoint? Yes. Well, maybe she could share that. Yes, that's what I'm looking forward to. So the link is on the... Part it should be also, yes, exactly. There's also a link right there, I believe. But I don't know if that will show anything. <coughs> on, on which website? Okay. Um, KV. Okay. Any other discussions? All the questions. No. Yeah. Oh, so I think there's a first and second of it. Yeah, yeah there's a discussion. Exactly. So, all in favor? Anyone opposed? So, carry. Moving on to our recommendations from Stafford Citizens. Uh, the first issue is the memo regarding the Regional District Kootenai Boundary Bylaw 1613 RDKB Emergency Planning Services Establishment Amendment Bylaw. The recommendation is that the Municipal Council for the Corporation of the City of Grand Force consents to the Regional District of Kootenai Boundary Board of Directors adopting bylaw number 1613 being the Regional District of Kootenai Boundary Emergency Planning Service Establishment Amendment Bylaw 1613 2016. May I have a mover on that please? Councillor Thompson, Councillor Tripp seconded. Any discussion? Councillor Hammond? Uh, yeah, the letter that was presented to us, October 28th, from the regional district, uh, talks about the city of Boston, not Grand Forks. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, all, all, we yeah. everybody have to approve it. <clears throat> Do you have something against Roslyn? <laughs> <laughs> Can I ski hill? No, it's, it's that we're not Roslyn. So, no, I have a requirement under the Act. Yeah, that. For all, all municipalities and areas to support. The yeah. Yeah. It's not costing us any money. Okay. All in favor? You want opposed? So carried. Next item is the from our acting corporate officer. Subject matter member regarding the regional district Kootenai boundary bylaw number sixteen fourteen Grand Forks Curling Facility Service Establishment. Recommendation is the Municipal Council of the Corporation of the City of Grand Forks consents to the Regional District of Kootenai Boundary Board of Directors adopting bylaw number 1614 being the RDKB Grand Forks Curling Ring Service Establishment bylaw number 1614, 2016. May I have a mover on that, please? Councillor Thompson, seconder. Councillor Krog, no discussion. Councillor Thompson. So they're increasing the maximum requisition then from thirty thousand of oh, thirty five thousand to mm -hmm. to forty three seven fifty. Yes. From us? From the participants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe it's a three year. Yeah, area D has to agree, area C has to agree, yeah. and council has to agree. Yeah. yeah. That's a problem. But it's each. It's each. $43,750. That's my understanding. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think so. You got the total budget. Okay, and maybe. Your Worship, um, Councilor Tripp, when the bylaw was adopted, it was in 1980. When the curling club came to the city uh, and the regional district, um, the the um, regional district acquired the building, the, 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 the facility, and, and the mortgage payment was, I think, somewhere around the $35,000 requisition. And it's been that ever since. And so that this is just increasing. You know, the building's probably paid for, but there's probably other capital costs and improvements that they've done over the years that need to be paid for as well. <coughs> So, all in favor? One opposed? So carried. From our manager of development engineering services, the subject matter is the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund Wastewater Treatment Plan Upgrade Grant Application. 
The recommendation is that council direct staff to develop and submit a proposal for the clean water and wastewater fund uh, for wastewater treatment plant upgrades with the proposed project having a total budget of four million uh, four million ten thousand with the city contribution city's contribution being six hundred and eighty two thousand coming from reserves and further that council direct staff to develop and submit a proposal for the clean water and wastewater fund for a sewer phasing plan having a total budget of a hundred thousand with the city's contribution of 17,000 coming from reserves. May I have a mover on that, please? Councillor Thompson, Councillor Ross, any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? So carried. From our manager of development engineering services, the subject matter is the pavement rehabilitation for 22nd Street. Highway 3 to 77th Avenue. The recommendation is Council receives a report from the Manager of Development Engineering Services regarding the pavement rehabilitation for 22nd Street for discussion and decision. May I have a move, please? Councillor Thompson, Councillor Ross. Any discussion? Councillor Thompson. Yes, I, um, I see that there have been uh, three estimates given uh, by the uh, consulting engineers. Um, uh, I would support doing the full debt street construction, um, which is going to give a full 20 years uh, uh, potential uh, life uh, to that project. Um, in, in the big scheme of things, $130,000 less, uh, it, it could um, uh, have less life expectancy. But I think if we're going to do something on the hospital and road, mm -hmm. I would like to see it done and done properly. Mm -hmm. And so I would support the full debt free construction. Councillor Ross, then Councillor Tripp. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree. I like to see full debt free construction and like to get as much value out of the money spent as possible. Um, I'm just curious is, um, you know, why do we only get full 20 years? Like, that doesn't sound like a lot. And anybody who's traveled anywhere in Europe in particular and sees that some city streets there are literally hundreds, if not a couple thousand years old, and they were built for horse and buggy, and now they actually accommodate uh, road traffic. Why can't we have better engineering in our streets that we can get more than 20 years out of it? I, I just don't understand how, we have crumbled, like our streets crumble when in other places in the world, no, it's not cost. I mean, just why can't we engineer? Well, I've been to places where it's frosty. It's not that frosty. I just wonder why we can't have engineer, why our streets aren't engineered in a manner that they last more than 20 years. Mr. Mayor, that, that can come back down to many contributing factors. But generally what happens is, one of the things you'll see in some of our back alleys, we've paved over top of improper road base. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been engineered or built. So it, it wasn't the fact that there wasn't engineering. We may not have spent money on engineering. We may have just built it because we thought it was a good idea to do so. You can see roads right now that will last 50 and 60 years. Concrete. The engineers are only going to tag a specific life expectancy to that road. They won't give it any more than that. We can take the risk associated with what you're talking about is build it properly and it will last longer. If you get the drainage off the road, and we've talked about this a little bit more, as soon as we get the drainage, the drain sits on the shoulders, we get the freeze and thaw, and the snow sits on the shoulders, seeps back underneath the roads, we get the freeze and thaw, we get the alligator on the edge of the road. If we build it properly, we maintain it properly, we should get way more life out of it, double the life expectancy. Maybe even 50 years, maybe 60 years, depending on the amount of maintenance that we put into that and how we shoulder and how we look after it. So it comes back down to the full construction cost and the full maintenance that you put into it. So. There's no reason why it won't last even longer than that. Just the engineers are going to be remiss to say that that will happen. It's up to council then to say that you'll invest into the maintenance and look after it. Because if it does go awry, they're going to say that you're, you'll go back to them and say, well, you said it was going to last longer. And it comes back to us to make it last longer. Um, you Thank you, 
Thank you, Mayor Coleman. Yeah, I'm just wondering, we were given a report uh, in the September 6th um, regular meeting minutes, and in that one it says the 2016 cost estimate, including 10% contingency for 22nd Street, was 464,375. Um, what I was wondering was how we compare that with, uh, with the other figure here on, on this report. Um, was would that 464,000 have been comparable with the basically the leveling base and paving? So I think it was given another name in that report. So I'm just not sure. Were we comparing apples to apples here? Was it that wasn't full depth reclamation? That was just I think they called it scaling and yeah, yeah, scaling and, and paving or something like that. Or manager development engineering. Wait. Sorry, it was my, yeah, it's off. Thanks, Attorney Holly me. The previous report, what we were doing was extrapolating some values from some other projects and kind of updating them. Um, this time, because we, uh, when we were out doing the sewer and water repairs, we discovered some things that we didn't know and that didn't show up in the core samples that we had taken. And so these estimates were done by the engineers with the new information and with up new dollars for today. So these would be a little more realistic than that than that was. Um, yeah, we found uh, the initial core samples found two layers of asphalt. When we started digging, we actually found there were spots where there was asphalt, six inches of sand, and then another layer of asphalt. So it kind of it makes us a little bit less secure about what we have under there, and so a little bit higher contingency because you never know what we're going to have. So if I could just ask them one more question. The potentially less than full life expectancy that's attributed to that, that 520,000, any guesses of what that might look like if, if we went with the level base and paving? Mr. Mayor, that would be, be hard for us to survive what that would look like because if we build it properly, we can say you can take more risk. If you build it, almost think about it, and I'm not saying, suggesting your husband builds things wrong, but if your husband at home builds things wrong, and then you have to hire somebody and have to the fact to, to do it right. Yeah. It, we sometimes have a tendency to think that we can figure it out along the way, but we want the engineers to process it and build it correctly. I know that my wife has experienced me doing something wrong at home, and she says, "No, who are we going to get to fix this?" And and this becomes something that we we may have done wrong along the way. So I think that's just something we I I couldn't even begin to imagine how much time we could put to that if it was built incorrectly. So I think that would be we couldn't give you any sort of timeline on that. So 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 are you saying? Am, am I hearing? Um, if I'm reading between the lines, that if we went with that leveling base and paving, that you that you might be um, having to deal with something that you really don't quite know what that's about. Whereas if you did the full depth, you'd know that you were just cleaning everything up to the bottom, getting the whole thing right again, as opposed to maybe haphazard patchwork. Maybe not all of it's going to be up to snuff. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I was just going to say that absolutely that is 100% correct. Once we have some certainty with that, we know what the road base material is and the full construction would look like. We know that we'll have the compaction, we'll meet all of those objectives as road builders search for. Uh, I, I can tell you that anything less than that will provide a, lo a level of uncertainty that I, I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending to council in this situation because it is the hospital road. I might suggest that on a local road that is going to receive less traffic that uh, maybe is an alleyway or a less than uh, used road that we could potentially look at taking some risk on, but I don't think this is appropriate application to take risk on a road like that. Yeah, I would support the uh, full depth reconstruction as well. And I'm just curious, um, are we going to be doing the same with the road with that? I just want to learn from our mistakes on 68th Street that I think the public really wants to see if we do a project that we do it right and that we don't lose width on our roads. And that if there's driveway accesses, that those be paved back to the way that they were before. And are we putting bicycle lanes? Uh, you know those little painted, the fake ones? Yeah, can we not do those? <laughs> <laughs> For 
First, I would like to say that I don't think that that was a mistake. Unless I'm wrong, our CEO can verify that. Mr. Mayor, this, this comes back down to the question in the community on levels of service. What can we afford? So uh, the desires that the community would like to have and what they can afford are two totally different worlds. If the community would love to pay for those things, absolutely, we can bring it forward and we can have bike lanes and we can no. do, all those, do all those things. But I would say to you that we took, we talk about narrowing 68th Street, I believe that it was less than 25 centimeters that that road was reduced. I would challenge people to go out and say that that, show me how that affected the 25 centimeters. We're talking about 25 centimeters. It's not that much. When we talk about it in the grand scheme of it, it's not like we took a meter off of either side. We took we took twenty five. So we're doing that this road. Well, when this when this road goes in, I believe that our road standards are set, uh, and the road standards are set in our um, in our bylaw, which is approved by council. So we didn't make a mistake. We met our road standard application. So are we going to be narrowing twenty seconds? I don't believe there is a plan to reduce it. I believe that we'll be meeting the standard of the road that is set by council. So there is no. I don't believe that there is a reduction in that service. But again, it comes back down to us being able to afford the levels of service we had. So I think it was not a mistake. I think it was very much a, a, a we met everything that we were supposed to do there. So, Councilor Potter. Personally, I don't, I don't mind that. I mean, I drive down 60th, it's fine. But I'm just going by the feedback that I've heard in the community, and council needs to respond to the feedback that we've heard in the community. So. I am definitely in support of spending the 650000 on this road because it's a hospital road, it's an important road, and I want to make sure that the community is satisfied with this project, that it looks like it's the same width as the previous road, and that we don't put bicycle lanes on that road, pave the driveways that might be interfered with. To our manager of development and engineering. Um, every driveway that was paid previously was repaved. We took pictures of every driveway and made sure that everything was put back the way it was yeah. prior. prior. Mm. Okay, so I believe we had a no motion. No motion. So may I have a mover on that? Councillor Thompson and Councillor Ross. So uh, we need to make a decision. Yes. We might want to make the the decision too. Yes, and I would propose uh, a resolution that the um, uh, council goes with option one, the full debt three construction, including 6% engineering and a 15% contingency uh, at a estimated cost of $650,000. Second. Councillor Ross seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? So carried. So the initial question was not voted on. No. To receive the report. Can you make another motion or resolution? Can I have to receive the report? Well, yes. we've already voted on it, but so it's just all in favor of receiving the report? That would be a simpler way. So carried. Moving on to our dep deputy manager of operations. Oh, that DCA. Subject matter is the DCAAP grant and early budget approval. The council gives early budget approval for the 2017 of 55,000 for the upgrade of the navigation lighting system as part of the application for the BCAAP grant for 2017-2018. May I have a mover? Councillor Butler, are you seconding? Councillor Krog, second. Any discussion? We have a couple pictures just to show Council because I was making sure we understood what we were purchasing because there's a, it would be great for Council to see the uh, the, uh, the site. So the uh, Deputy Manager has a uh, just a quick few pictures to show you. So yeah. we can turn it over to him to explain sure. to us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so like our solar panels by now, they're they're 15 to 20 years old out there. Um, you can clearly see there's sort of rock chips, uh, damage to them. Um, and they're oh, highly, get it. they're highly inefficient here all, all over the, um, from, from the age, like the technology nowadays that's been used, you could have a much smaller panel and achieve a lot more 
uh, energy efficiency and capturing of the sunlight. Um, currently, we got minimum six batteries. In a lot of sites, we got eight or even 12 stash to keep this on. This particular site actually has two sets of solar panels. And the other one we moved to another site where it was kind of out of life, but here we added it on there just to make it last a little longer. And this is the typical building that houses it now. These are the old lights, but by now we've replaced these dual lights already to have um, to have the single LED light up there. Um, but that's what it looked like last year. So what I'm what we're trying to go after for each of those sites is basically one of these apparatuses, along with um, along with a new solar panel, a new higher efficient one. So at the end of the day, these are two. Uh, methanol fuel cells. Um, once they basically generate energy, only water water vapor comes out, CO2. Um, that's it. Nothing and heat and electricity and completely environmentally friendly. MOT uses these devices all over the Coquihalla and hard to reach places. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. And um, the AWAS site that we were also talking about, and that is basically um, this tower here, along with assorted apparatuses. That, um, for example, this this thing here is the one that's uh, it's a accelerometer. That's the one that um, is needed by Medivac, um, and it alone is thirty thousand dollars usually. So that's what it comes down to. Thank you. Yeah. At least we know what we're talking about now. <laughs> so that's that same letter of support that we asked the RDK, yes. which is yeah. 50 the quarter. Councillor Krog. <clears throat> oh, for you guys. Um, yeah, can we also make sure that the remote locations are signed? Um, you see, there was vandalism to that one, and people out there may not actually put two and two together that this is not just a solar panel in the, or, or whatever um, in the middle of nowhere it's specifically there for emergency medical so some kind of signage so good, yeah. right. that, would, good. that would be a you know an important piece was his kids are maybe these kids maybe it's not kids but people realize that they could be affecting one of their family members being many backed out if they decide to vandalize this. Councillor Abbott. No, I don't know. It didn't seem to have any effect on how many search and rescue huts in the wilderness have been vandalized and all of their equipment stolen. But for money, not for the sheer joy of vandalism. But they know it's search and rescue and they're stealing, they're, they're taking stuff. So if you mark it, okay. you know, for emergency use, you know, people are going to think there's something of value when they can break anything for Our deputy manager, do you have another idea? Yeah. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we actually have signage on all of the uh, sites that uh, small, it's not a big sign, but as far as I know, there's a small sign on each of the sites that says life-saving equipment and, and things like that. Um, it still doesn't prevent from some kids going out there. And makes sense. We could make bigger ones or like even some sites are fenced. Um, yeah, but that doesn't even help. Like up on Observation Mountain, there's been cars driven into the fences for the Rogers Tower, for example, that's up there. Yes. <laughs> to support. Yes. Were we able to capture the car? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Thompson. Unfortunately, no, no level of government can legislate anything against stupidity, and that basically is what people that vandalize those kinds of sites are. Levels of government. Councillor Ross. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there no um, uh, mechanism in place for um, severe penalties for vandalizing public property like that? Like there should be like a minimum $25,000 fine anybody caught um, vandalizing and that um, people should report and receive a, an award for um, any knowledge. The critter um, cam like there. Yeah, well, I was thinking critter cam as well, but you know, there has to be some kind of I don't know, is there any any mechanism in place for, uh, you know, caught vandalized? I mean, I've seen it on fences around, on, on um, like, hydroelectric. I'm sure there is, but I'm sure the key word is 
catching them. Oh, yeah, but if I'm with my buddy and they vandalize, and I know there's a $25,000 award for, you know, yes, yes. Good I don't know. Maybe deterrent. that's going to make somebody Possibly. think twice. Anyway, okay, I'm going to call the court. All in favor? Anyone opposed? So carried. A good point. Uh, moving on to our bylaws section from our chief financial officer, the, rec the subject matter is the City of Grand Forks 2017 Revenue Anticipation Borrowing Bylaw. Recommendations Council gives final reading to the bylaw 2034 to City of Grand Forks Revenue Anticipation Borrowing Bylaw 2017. May I have a move around that please, Councillor Thompson, Councillor Tripp. <coughs> All in favour. So carried. From our Manager of Development Engineering Services, the subject matter is Johnson Flat Wetland Protected Natural Area Dedication. Recommendation is Council gives final reading of the proposed Johnson's Flat Wetland Nature Park Bylaw Number 2035-2016. May I have a mover, please? Councillor Krog, Councillor Ross. All in favor? So carried. We have no late items. Uh, next is questions from the public and the media. And again, may I caution everyone that the subject matter has to pertain to tonight's agenda. Otherwise, they will not be replied to. The lady in the front. Yes, Your Worship. Um, my question was about item 8A and why Grand Forks Council has to approve the item for Roslyn through their education. Is that for Roswell Emergency? Yeah, yeah. for Roswell Emergency yeah. Fund. The Emergency Fund. They get to see it as a fund. No, that's where she added it. Yeah. Do you want to touch on this or do you want me to just speak to it? Sure. It's, it's, it, if I miss anything, I'll ask the Deputy Corp Officer to add it. But when we change a service area within our regional district, we have to amend the bylaw to include that, and it requires the participation. Uh, it requires all the participants that are in the service area to agree to it. So, because it's a regionally uh, significant bylaw, it's here within the local government act that requires that process. So, it's a it's a housekeeping item. Roslyn was out of the provision of emergency management services in the region, and now they've wanted to come back in. So, they've approached the regional district about coming back into the service, and that requires. Uh, an amendment to the bylaw in the process. Thank you. And it also gives your council's direction to our representative to the board, which is our mayor, yeah. on how to whether or not to support that. Sorry. Any other questions or concerns? Can I go in the front? Uh, yeah, I was just curious about these solar panels. Um, Would you please be able to identify yourself? Oh, uh, Derek McDonough, Juice FM. Thank you. I just had a question about the solar panels. Um, looking at the pictures, it's obvious that the damage to them uh, is giant rocks, which is the same thing. It's vandalism. I you know what that is. That is people picking up a giant rock and smashing into it. I'm just wondering if these panels are that old, what kind of technology for the panels? Like, are there ones that you're going to get that are going to withstand rock damage? Because how much are you going to spend on these panels once another kid picks up a rock and throws it into it? No. <laughs> Should you product up there like that? I, just, I don't know the, um, the, the extent of uh, solar panel technology. Are they all just as fragile as glass these days? Or is the city looking to get, like, are, is there some out there that Tesla. are durable? Yeah. You raise them up higher. Tesla, Tesla shingles. Yeah. 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 I guess that's a technical question. We have to leave that for the experts. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so when, when I spoke with the um, uh, guys that sell the other uh, device, the CFO, why the um, solar or charger devices, uh, they were talking about the solar panels as well. So they can be a, a lot smaller, so they don't have to be such a large panel anymore. But at the same time, technology has come a lot further than where it was 15 years ago for these panels. Mm -hmm. um, then again, like uh, Councillor Hammond was saying, um, Tesla just released some interesting shingles for the roof that are glass and see-through and don't break. So you never know what, what's out there in a year from now, but when, when we're doing this or another half a year from now, what, what can be obtained? Yeah, because these panels, as mentioned, were 20 years old, I believe. 
and yeah. so I'm sure leaps and bounds now. Probably made with Lexan or one of these products like you have in the hockey arenas with glasses and this stuff. Or raise them up a little higher. Or raise them up, but then yeah, yeah. And they're smaller, so you'd be more intriguing and challenged to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any other questions? Gentleman in the second row. <clears throat> Gene Cook. Uh, as far as the solar panels go, the ones used at the or a Russian school on the West End. I just can't remember the name now, but they are, I believe they are bulletproof. They do make panels now that are extremely strong. You can buy cheaper panels and other panels that are not, but there are some now that are very, very durable. So you might want to look into that specific brand. I can get the name for you if you need. Yeah. So if they're bulletproof, they're probably like that. Say that? The product is Lexan, if they're bulletproof. No, I forget. They're made in Germany. And they just keep the brand name slips my mind right now. But if they were installed by a company out of Red Deer called Sun Power. Mm. And uh, that was one of the reasons they took those panels, because they sit just off of the, the one street, and they're very accessible at all times by anyone, and they needed to be protected. So. The other thing with the panels, the more dirt they get on them, bird manure, that kind of issue, it reduces the efficiency of them. So the rack style panels that you have are a good idea, but there, there should really be a maintenance program that keeps them once a month where they're cleaned, they're snow shoveled off of them and the like. And then you can use less panels too by having, keeping the panels more efficient. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All ready. Moving right along. I have a motion to adjourn. Councilor Ross, Councilor Butler, all in favor? So carried. This meeting is adjourned.